Hey there, Foxy Gamers. Welcome to my full year one min-max guide for Stardew Valley. This is an abridged guide, unlike my series that only focused on spring, as there's just way too much footage to include it all. This video is part one of four that focuses on the spring setup for the rest of the year. Thanks to feedback from my other series, I wanted to make sure this guide was achievable by players on any platform, not just PC users. Therefore, this playthrough is more forgiving and has plenty of room for error and improvising. It is less reliant on RNG, but your game will still be affected by it, as that is just the nature of Stardew Valley. You can see in parts that I did use one mod that keeps track of your skills, but it is absolutely not necessary to be successful with this strategy. By following these tips, you will easily achieve numbers as good or higher than mine. By day one of spring year two, I earned a total of 3.7 million gold with 980,000 in pocket. I'll share with you what I think are the most important points as well as things I wish I had done differently. The number one difference in this guide versus my last is that I never sold any raw crops, meaning everything got turned into an artisan good at some point. The key to this strategy is loads of kegs and preserves jars, but you're likely not going to have enough leftover materials to start making them until summer. The first few days are still the same strategy as my Spring Min Max guide, the only difference being to make sure you have at least one cauliflower, green bean, and potato seed planted. You can wait until the second day to buy a green bean from Pierre, and you'll likely have the others from mixed seeds. This is important for turning in the spring crops bundle by day 13 in order to get an extra harvest of 20 strawberries. You will want to spend all of your money on strawberries on day 13, but level 6 farming is not necessary. I had 112 strawberries and watered them all by hand with a copper watering can. When planting your strawberries, I suggest tilling your land in 3x3 squares as though you have sprinklers and spacing them a tile apart. This will speed up the planting for hops in the summer. Every day it's raining, go fish at the forest river to try and catch as many catfish as possible. Bring along trout soup if you need it. In my experience, this is always hands down more profitable than going to the mines early in the game. Unlike my spring min-max guide, I recommend choosing fruit bats for your farm cave instead of mushrooms. This will help you complete the artisan bundle easier in order to get your greenhouse ASAP. Start planting oak trees along the east side of your farm whenever you pick up acorns. This is a good spot to grow oak trees because you can't till the land there anyway. Then when you get to level 3 foraging, you can start placing as many tappers as possible on them in preparation for kegs. You can also plant acorns right outside your farm to the east along the path to increase your oak resin production. If you have extra gold on day 22, you can buy and plant as much kale as possible. This will net you the best gold when pickling later. Make sure to continue your 3x3 spaced out grid until you have enough plots for at least 200 hops. You can still follow all the tips for progressing through the mines from my first guide, but once you get to 80 there is no need to go deeper until you have plenty of copper, iron, and gold, or if you're in desperate need of the obsidian blade. Complete the boiler room in the community center ASAP in order to reduce your travel time to and from the mines. Upgrade all your tools whenever possible. Try to keep 2,000 gold and 5 copper bars at all times in anticipation of a rainy day until your watering can is upgraded. At the end of spring, I had a copper hoe and watering can, a steel axe and pickaxe, and a fully upgraded backpack. Keep in mind that the Stardew Valley wiki is wrong about farming XP. You get full XP each time you collect a multiple harvest crop, so green beans and strawberries will increase your farming skill a ton. When you reach level 5 mining, I recommend getting the miner profession instead of geologist as you are going to need far more ores of everything than you probably think. For level 5 foraging, I went with forester, as again, you will need more wood than you think. These are the most important tips for spring. There aren't really a lot of things I would have done differently for this strategy, aside from the random dumb mistake of going to shops when they're closed, or forgetting important tools and items when leaving my farm. If that's all too much for you to remember, you can copy pasta the list of tips from the description down below. That's it for this guide, stay tuned for summer tips. Hope this treats you well and be sure to give me feedback so I can make improvements in the future. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, stay foxy.